Hello campers. Most people know that Google Chrome is the most popular browser, but not everybody's heard of Microsoft Edge. Edge is the default browser in Windows 10, but it's also available for older versions of Windows, Mac OS, iPhone, and even Linux. It was completely re-engineered in 2020 based on the open source Chromium project, which is also the basis for Google Chrome. And in Windows 10, it now replaces Internet Explorer. In this video, I'm going to show you how Edge outperforms Chrome in three key areas of usability, performance and privacy. Welcome back to the channel where we're keeping IT simple because life is already complicated enough. I know people get very passionate about browsers just like they do about operating systems and mobile phones, but I'm not intending to offend anybody with today's video, it's just my personal opinion plus some fact-based research. The version of Edge that is available today was first released in January 2020, and because it's based on the open source Chromium project, it is fairly similar to Google Chrome. But unlike Internet Explorer and previous versions of Edge, this version gets frequent updates because it updates on the same release schedule as the Chromium project. But while many of the features are similar between the two browsers, they are implemented differently. The good news about Microsoft Edge is that it works with the Google Chrome extension, so you can keep all of your extensions that you're currently using on Chrome, and it's compatible with all of the websites that you use. They work perfectly in Edge, just the same way that they do on Chrome, because they share the same rendering engine. And both browsers are fast and cross-platform, so you can use Edge on your PC and on your mobile device. So while there are many similarities between the two browsers, in the three areas I'm going to compare now, I'm going to concentrate on areas where they actually differ from one another. So if you're using Edge on a Windows 10 PC, you get multitasking and integration with the Alt-Tab feature. So when you use Alt-Tab to switch between open applications, each tab in Edge is represented now as an application to help you navigate all of your open tabs. You can configure how this feature works or turn it off if you don't like it, but it's designed to help you quickly navigate around all of your open tabs that you might have open in one or multiple Edge Windows. Edge supports a vertical tab, so if you've got a widescreen monitor, it can actually help you to see more clearly the tabs that you have open. Because when you open tabs horizontally, the more tabs that open, the smaller each tab becomes. So it's hard to read what page is actually loaded into that tab. But when you're using vertical tabs, of course, you have much more space and you can scroll up and down. And this is really useful for people who have a larger monitor. It also includes a feature called Immersive Reader, and what this does is strip back all the advertising from a page that's maybe an article while allowing you to concentrate on the content itself. Immersive Reader also allows you to change the font, the background color, and there's also the option to read the text aloud. So this is really useful not only as an accessibility feature, but also if you want to just have Edge read the page out to you, maybe while you're doing something else. For those of you using Edge at work, Microsoft are emphasizing the integration with Microsoft 365. So you can use Edge to search your corporate internet and have a home feed that's displayed from your intranet site and get that integration with your corporate data. There's also a tool built into the browser called Collections, and this is a research tool that allows you to collect information from the internet, organize it, make notes about it, and even synchronize collections between your different devices that are running Edge. And Microsoft is also working on a feature to integrate Edge with Windows Search. So if you're on a Windows 10 PC, very soon it will be possible to use the search box at the bottom of the taskbar to search Edge for open tabs, your top sites, your favorites, and your browsing history. Now, of course, one of the biggest differences between Edge and Chrome is that Chrome is obviously developed by Google, which is a company that relies on advertising for revenue. And while Microsoft does have a commercial search engine called Bing, it doesn't rely on that for its income. So Microsoft has improved the privacy controls in Edge, and it's really simple to understand what's going on, and you can choose between three different levels of privacy. The default privacy level is going to be the best one for most people, but it is easier to set your privacy controls and you get a little bit more control than Chrome is offering. 
For me, the number one reason to use Edge over Chrome is performance. Now, they both perform really well, they're both fast browsers, but one of the complaints that many people have about Chrome is that it's very resource hungry, so especially it takes a lot of RAM. But even if you have a lot of RAM on your system, of course you want each open application to use it as little as possible to make sure that you've got enough resources to run whichever applications you want to open next. Now, lots of other people on the net have done resource usage tests between the two browsers browsers and performance tests and that's really hard to do effectively so I'm going to just tell you that the general consensus seems to be that Edge does use maybe 20 to 30 percent less RAM and that the performance of the two browsers is pretty much equal although Edge does tend to have the Edge over Chrome so it does tend to perform slightly faster in most cases but the difference is going to be negligible for most people. Edge has a feature called sleeping tabs now this works on a time basis so once you haven't been using a tab that's been open for a while it puts it to sleep and you can click on it again and it will wake instantly and you can tell that tabs in Edge are sleeping because they're kind of greyed out in the user interface. Now this technology comes from Chromium of course and Google has implemented it in a slightly different way and their feature is called freezing tabs and it works by waiting until the system is low on memory and then freezing the tabs. So these features work slightly differently and to be honest I prefer Microsoft's way of doing it on a time basis so if I haven't used a tab maybe for 30 minutes just put it to sleep and let's save those system resources. Another important factor with reducing resources is for people on notebooks it really helps to save battery life. The less RAM you're using especially the longer your battery is going to last. So if it's not already installed on your system then download Edge and give it a try. I'll put a link in the description below. So what do you think about Edge? Would you ever give up Chrome to move to another browser? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And on the screen now you can see a couple of other videos that I have on Edge, one about the collections feature and the other on the multitasking integration with Alt-Tab on Windows. That's it from me today, see you next time.